Hey everyone, Retire on Dividends here. Back to make an update to the Defiance Funds. Again, I do these once per week, typically on Sunday mornings. Uh, so let's get to it. So as most of you know, uh, Defiance declared their distribution on Friday uh, this past week. So, and uh, I believe that was June 28th. So what I do is I track now how much they're yielding on each declaration date from inception. So the latest one, uh, QQQI is yielding 52%, JEPY 33%, IWMY 57%, TRESF 10%, SPY T 20%, and USOY 74%. So if you look down at the bottom, from inception, how are they, you know, what's their average? So QQQY 58%, again, that's pretty good. JEPY 43%, also good. Uh, IWMY is the beast of the bunch, 73%, TRESS 12%, SPY T right on the money, 20%, at just, just like they say. And USOY, surprising, 59%. You know, uh, USOY is, you know, it's number two now, essentially, in average uh, distribution yield. QQQT uh, did not declare a payment, but they're pretty much going to be like SPY T, they're going to be in the 20% range, all right? All right, so what else? So I did add a few columns here just for uh, to keep it interesting. Why is column A Shh. so small here? Let me, okay. All right, so if you look, I now have launch price. I have current price plus distribution, ITD gains, no drip, and then house money. So let's go through each. So obviously we have the launch date, right? QQQI launched on uh, September 13th. 2023, their launch price was $20.14. Um, so they have had a whole bunch of distributions. If I scroll over here, I do track the total distributions. QQQY has paid a total of $8.41 from inception. So if I add the current price, which is, where is the current price? Uh, $14.99 plus the distribution. That's the current price price plus distribution. So if they didn't pay you anything, you'd be up, uh, you know, you'd be up about 16%. You'd be at $23.40, okay? Uh, but obviously they paid you, so, you know, you can't see it that way, right? You just look at the $14.99, you're like, oh my God, we're down, we're, we're losing money. Um, you know, but obviously that's not necessarily true. You know, a lot of it got paid out. And then column F is, to me, the most important and the best column of all. It's house money column. So what that means is when this column hits 100%, um, that's basically saying if you invested in these funds from inception, you're now at the point where you're playing with house money. So all that means is when the distribution hits the launch price, um, then it's house money time. So the distribution is currently at 841 for a QQQY. So that's, you know, that's 42% of the launch price, which is $20.14. So they're almost halfway there, right? They almost paid um, half of the investment back. So that's pretty good. Now, if you go down the line, if you look at JEPY, see if I can zoom in without screwing this up. Um, they, um, their current price plus distro is 2284, uh, which, you know, again, you'd be up, you're up 14%. House money's 32%, so they're not quite as far ahead like QQQI, but they're, they're not doing that bad. <laughs> Again, they're, um, I call them the steady, the safe one of the bunch, of the three, they're the safe one. Well, I have to, I guess, include USOY in the convo now too, but anyway, IWMY, um, they, their current price plus distro is 23.28. So again, if they didn't pay you anything, that's where you'd be, right? So it'd be up 15%. House money percent, they're at 43%. So they take the lead. They came out the latest. They came out in October 23. But you again, they're 43% already. Um, you know, again, that means you got back 43% of your original investment. Tress kind of sucks uh, because again, they're they're down. So their current price plus distro is only 1793. So they're down 10%, but even based on that. House money's 5%, so it's not even worth mentioning. The others, again, uh, they pay, they're they newer and they pay low, but either way, SPY T, 
<clears throat> you'd be up 8%, you saw 9%. You saw you already paid 10% of the original investment. That's crazy. You know, and that's been what, two months and they paid 10% of the original investment. So that could be a high flyer. That could be a sleeper here. Um, I don't know. Their launch price was what, 1994? What's their current price? 1983. Not bad, not bad. Okay. Yeah, that one, I have not bought you saw yet, but uh, we'll see. We'll, th we'll, we'll have to think about it. So for those of you that are not aware, the, the latest distribution information, uh, QQQI, is paying on Monday. All of these are paying on Monday. 65 cents. JPY, 46 cents. I have you know, last month up side by side, so you can see the comparable. Uh, IWMY, 69 cents. Tress, 15 cents. By T, 33 cents. And USOY is $1.23. A lot of people are kind of upset with this month's payout, but I really think it's a good month. And I'll show you uh, exactly why. First, we'll look at QQQY. Oh, what the hell is happening? Stupid errors. All right, let me try to refresh. Let me go back. I go down like that. Refresh. Okay, it worked. All right, good. All right, so on deck date, um, the last time I covered Defiance, they were at 66 cents per share. It looks like they lost two cents on deck date. So they ended up with 64 cents income per share for the month. All this means is the price of QQQY went up 64 cents from the previous X dividend date, okay? And they're paying what? You see down below, 65 cents. So they essentially are paying everything they made. So there is no, you know, you're not essentially losing capital this month. You're losing a penny, obviously, but it's pretty. It's a pretty damn good month, if you ask me, because that the, the idea of these funds... Yes, it's a very aggressive, high-yielding fund, but they sell puts every single day, every single day. They make premium, hopefully, every single day. Then they pay out the premium, and that's how it works. It's an income fund. And this month, QQQI, this fund worked exactly how it should, in my opinion, of course. Others may disagree, but let's look at JEPY. Again, this one is my favorite. I know some may disagree, but uh, some like IWMY because it's just a, a baller. You know, it's crazy, but it, it does it very well or very bad. Anyway, so JPY, they made 54 cents this month. Uh, again, they were at 58. They lost four cents on deck date. That's okay. But they're only paying out 46 cents. So guess what? You're going to keep eight cents in appreciation. So essentially, yes, they made 54 cents per share. Essentially, if you owned it by X date, you know, last month. So you made 54 cents during that time. They're going to pay you 46 of it. You keep eight in, you know, capital appreciation. So how is that bad? That's not bad. That's awesome. All right, let's go to IWMY. Birds are out. Even though it's freaking raining, man, the birds are still going. All right, so IWMY. Oh, my God. They ended on a positive note. Thank God. But as you can see, they did horrible this month. They made six cents per share. They're paying out 69 cents. So they're, if everyone's wondering why IWMY payment is so small, that is exactly why. Um, again, I know they pay based on extrinsic income. So the data I'm providing you does not give that. But again, I'm just keeping this at a high level. Um, I used to track it to the, you know, to the detail. But now I'm just doing this at a high level. So it still makes sense, you know, just looking at the overall picture. And to me, like, owning these funds personally, I, I like this way better for my sanity, of course, too. But anyway, if you look at, you know, how much they made per share, they made six cents per share for the month. It's awful, right? Awful. They paid, they paid 69. So essentially, you lost 63 cents off the top, right? You know, capital depreciation, right? So that sucks. Yeah. But again, this is not how these funds are supposed to work. Like this is a this is an example of how a bad month would look. And this IWMY had a bad month. Is this a bad fund? Not necessarily, but it's more volatile. So, you know, it could go the other direction. Typically, the other two kind of work in sync. Um, IWMY is always doing its own thing. And this month, not great. So it is what it is, right? 
All right, let's look at Tress. Uh, not many people even care about Tress, but they made 19 cents for the month, uh, which surprisingly is very good based on the historical data that they've had. And they're paying out 15 cents. So bravo to them. They made 19, they paid out 15. So you keep four cents in appreciation if you do own Tress. Let's keep going. Spy T. One of the, you know, I'll say the fan faves. Um, due to, I'll say, the security, it's a little safer option. Um, it looks like they lost six cents on deck date. Oh, that sucks. But either way, they made 58 cents for the month per share. Now, they're only paying 33. So look at that. Look at that. What is that? 25 cents you keep in capital appreciation. So essentially, you made 25 cents of capital appreciation and you made a 33 cent dividend. That's a hell of a deal, if you ask me. So good job, Spy T. You soy. Yo, you soy, what's up? All right. They made five cents on deck day. Good job, you soy. Man. But they only made 62 cents for the month. So that's good. Yet they're paying a dollar twenty-three. Why are they paying a dollar twenty-three? Because that's probably what they made based on the extrinsic income, right? There's intrinsic income and there's extrinsic income from the options premium that you uh, you make, but you know, typically they say, um, or Jay has said this on many interviews because obviously he, you know, he helps run Defiance, uh, the options. A uh, dollar twenty three is probably what they made, or that, or around a uh, dollar twenty three in extrinsic income. So, of course, yes, it didn't work out. A lot of the trades did not work out in their favor, uh, but in the end, at least they made money. They made sixty two cents. They had a couple. Couple bad days, right? Let's go back here. Yeah, they lost sixteen cents. Yeah, dollar thirty eight, man. They got <clears throat> that's a bad day. What the hell happened on June first? Is that formula even? Oh no. Well, that's a drop. Okay, so that's X day. So they actually lost sixty six cents on the prior X date. So what the hell happened, man? That's awful. Either way, guys, they made sixty-two cents. They paid a dollar twenty-three. So, QQQT again. It's too new to really judge, but so far they're down three cents. They didn't pay anything, so we'll give them a pass for now. Um, all right, here's the summary. One of my favorite spreadsheets I made. So July. Look at July on the bottom. You see the here. I'll get rid of everything else. Premium income for QQQI. <laughs> This is the summary. They made sixty-four cents. They made six. They paid sixty-six. This is rounding up to the nearest cent, of course. So yeah, they paid two cents more than they made. Fine, I, I, I could I could deal with that. Can you? JPY, they made fifty-four cents. They paid forty-six. Boom, perfect. IWMY, they only made six. They paid seventy. Yuck. Tress, they made nineteen. They paid fifteen. Good job. Spy T, they made fifty-eight cents. They paid thirty-four. Good job. Usoy made sixty-two. Paid a dollar twenty four. Yuck. Okay, so now we're tracking the capital appreciation, right? Essentially, you know, obviously at the time, this is just uh, month to month. This is not exact by a current date, but this is how much they're uh, down in capital, right? And then right down below that, you can see how much distribution that they have paid. So, and then right below that, you see premium income. So that is what I'm showing. Each fund has made in premium income, essentially. QQQI made $1.94, JEPY $1.91, and so on and so forth. So you can see the numbers. And then I have, you know, again, this is a work in progress down here. I don't really feel comfortable with these numbers or, under, you know, really understand how it would work. But I basically am trying to calculate how much you should have to reinvest in each of these funds. QQQY, for example, I'm showing based on how much they've made versus how much they paid out. I'm showing they'd have to reinvest 75%. I'm not sure if that's exactly true, but again, that's the current numbers. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm not gonna go through that again. I did cover that in the last video, but you can see, you know, I'll, I'll at least look at the top three. QQQY, I'm showing 75%, JAPY, 68%, and IWMY, 79%. Um, obviously, if you look at Spy T, Great, only 22%, right? So, but again, still kind of new. So we'll see how most of these play out in time and then go from there. 
All right, so that's that tab. And then we, of course, have the status tab where everyone stands. I updated the share count and everything, but the net asset value of QQQY, still the largest fund, 264 million. Number two is still IWMY, 158 million. JEPY, still number three, 119 million. Who's gonna catch who, right? Who's gonna be number four? Right now, it's SPY-T. <clears throat> I'm not sure anyone's gonna catch them. And I'm not sure if they're gonna catch any of the top three, but time will tell. Uh, QQQT already doing well, 4.9 million. Um, but Tress and Usoy, kind of a disappointment at the moment, both, you know, 2.4, 2.9 million, but you know, we'll see. Uh, Usoy is still new, so they have an excuse. Tress does not have an excuse. Uh, they kind of really haven't moved. So, all right. So that's really the update for the Defiance funds. Um, as always, guys, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This video is for fun and entertainment. So hopefully you had fun. Hopefully you were entertained. If not, we will try again next week. Because again, I do a Defiance update once per week. And I basically cover how they do throughout the week. Um, how much they made per share and what the total return is, blah, 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 blah. And I just think it's an easy way to track it. I know they're adding more funds, so this video is kind of getting longer and longer, but that's okay, it's once a week, so it shouldn't be that bad. Um, but anyway, let me know what you guys think. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, leave them in the comments below. And if you wanna help the channel even more, feel free to share it with your friends and family if they're interested and super high yielding funds. Actually, this has the, the variation of the super high yielders, the okay high yielders, you know, the, the mid to high yielders, right? So the lowest 10% being Tress and the highest is uh, Usoy now, 74%. So pick your poison, all right? Anyway, guys, um, that's it for this video. I guess I should do a keyword, right? Okay, keyword, keyword, keyword. Um, let's see. Well, let's go with um, Jeppy. People are going to disagree with me, but Jeppy is the GOAT, right? Because right now, all these funds, you know, a lot of people hating on them. But right now, I'm, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling like Jeppy is the GOAT, right? They're, they return 32% of your investment already, right? Not as much as the others, but, you know, look at look at their current price. The current price of them is $16 as compared to QQQY and IWMY. They're in the $14 range. So of the three, of the big three, JEPY is the GOAT. So keyword, if you want to prove that you made it to the end of the video, the keyword for today, JEPY is the GOAT. We always talk about NVIDIA is the GOAT for yield max. But who's the goat of defiance? Right now, it's Jeppy. Is it going to be taken over by Spy T in due time? Probably. But for right now, I'm going to go with Jeppy is the goat. All right? Whether you disagree or not. Anyway, guys, I'm out of here. I hope you guys have a great day, and I will talk to you later.